In lesson 5.7, differential equations, separation of variables, we'll focus on a specific set of differential equations, those known as ordinary differential equations. Now that'll differentiate them from what we call partial differential equations, which you'll learn about uh, in a course sometime after calculus three probably. Uh, anyway, for now we'll take a look at these ordinary differential equations and uh, we'll see how to solve these differential equations using a method known as the separation of variables. In an ordinary differential equation, uh, we're going to have a function, generally y, along with its derivative, which is generally y prime, which exist together in the same equation. What we need to do is separate that y and that y prime and all other terms involving y and move those to the left side of the equation while we move all the x's, the constants, and everything else to the right side of the equation. Once we've done that, we'll be able to integrate both sides and actually solve for the function y. An interesting side note here is that after we've solved these differential equations, we can then go ahead, differentiate our solution. That means we'll have y, that's our solution, and y prime, its derivative. And we can plug both of those back into our differential equation to actually check it and see if the left side in fact equals the right side. It's a beautiful thing. Um, quite honestly, you've been doing that since Algebra 1. Um, and here we are in BC Calculus doing it again. Well, the good thing about Lesson 5.7 is that Lesson 5.7 actually involves both uh, separation of variables of ordinary differential equations as well as dealing with what are called um, homogeneous differential equations. Why is that good news? Well, it's good news because homogeneous differential equations are not tested on the uh, Calculus BC exam. And for that reason, we're not going to cover them here in Lesson 5.7. Uh, we'll focus strictly on separation of variables, and perhaps we'll learn more about homogeneous differential equations after the AP exam when we have more time to relax and uh, take it all in. Anyhow, that being said, since we're only dealing with separation of variables here in Lesson 5.7, uh, we're actually only going to have three examples to deal with. So that's pretty sweet. Anyway, all that being said, why don't we go ahead and start with example A. And here in example A, we have what I consider to be an actually uh, a pretty easy uh, differential equation to work with. See, we have a y prime here, uh, but actually we don't have any y's. Uh, that might make things a little bit easier uh, because all we need to do is solve for y prime and then integrate to find y. So if we do that, uh, let's go ahead and set this up. y prime will be equal to uh, the quantity natural logarithm of x squared divided by 2x. Uh, of course, you can see how I got that, just a little bit of algebra in effect. And what I can do now is if I turn this y prime, uh, if I actually turn this into a dy dx situation, what I can do is multiply both sides by dx. Uh, I'll be left with dy on this side, and over here, uh, I'll have that uh, quantity natural logarithm of x squared over 2x and dx. And now that I've done that, hopefully it's evident to you that all I really need to do is integrate, and what I'll have on the left side is quite simply just y. Now, of course, to integrate the right side is going to be a little bit trickier. Um, but I'm going to encourage you to use some u du substitution. Uh, it is, after all, our favorite thing. So if we do that, uh, what should we call u? Well, remember that u is the inside part of a function here, and uh, or rather a function within a function. And so we do have the quantity squared. And perhaps that quantity should be our u in this case. So u will be natural logarithm of x. And therefore, du will be 1 over x dx. And that looks all fine and dandy because uh, if we take this 2 and move it out front of the integral, certainly there's our u squared. And on the bottom, that x is actually the bottom x of our du. And so what we're going to end up with here is 1 half times the integral of u squared du. And that's a pretty easy integral to do. You should have no problems with this one. Uh, this will simply give us 1 half uh, u cubed over 3 plus c. 
which if I go ahead and uh, put all this together, do my unsubstitution, uh, combine all my fractions, what I'll end up with is 1 6th times the quantity natural logarithm of x cubed plus c. So there is my general solution to this differential equation. Now, I'm not looking for the general solution, however. I am looking for the particular solution, and I'm looking for the particular solution that satisfies this condition right there, y of 1 equals 2. So let's go ahead and handle that. Um, I'm going to use my general equation, but instead of y, I'm going to substitute in, well, 2. And so what I'll have is 2 equals 1 6 uh, the natural log of x, and x, of course, is just going to be this 1. So I have the natural log of 1 cubed plus c. Well, hopefully you can do this in your head. The natural log of 1 is, of course, just 0. And so this entire term is going to cancel out, and I'll be left with c equals 2. And what does that mean? Well, it means that my particular solution to this differential equation is simply going to be y equals 1 6 times the quantity natural log of x cubed plus 2. That is my particular solution. And at this point, I'm going to challenge you to something. Go ahead and differentiate this so that you have y prime. Plug that y prime in right here and multiply all this out. See if you don't get 0. If you don't get 0, there's definitely an error somewhere. But when I did this myself, and I did do this, uh, I ended up with zero, and I certainly challenge you to give it a shot and see what you end up with. Again, don't plug y in here. Plug the derivative of y, and then multiply it out, subtract this, see what you get. Good times. All right, well, with example A being done, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at example B. Uh, the tricky part of example B before we get there is that it doesn't involve X and Y necessarily. Um, it's actually going to involve two other variables, big T and little t. I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a look. So before we begin example B, just a, a fair warning to you. Uh, of course, we both know that capital T and lowercase t are different variables, uh, but be certain that you keep them separate as you're working throughout this problem that could really mess you up so be careful uh, what are we trying to solve for here anyway are we trying to solve for capital T or are we trying to solve for little case T quite honestly in this problem it's a little bit hard to tell but when we look at our initial condition you see that it's actually capital T that we're gonna try to solve for and for that reason uh, let me go ahead and try to get capital T uh, D capital T this capital T minus 70. I'm going to try to get all the capital T's on one side, everything else on the other side, and uh, we'll go on from there. So to do that, uh, I'll start by just leaving D capital T on the left, and on the right, I'll have negative K multiplied by the quantity capital T minus 70, D little t. All right, so all I did was just subtracted this big term over to the right. And now what I'm going to do uh, to meet my original objective to get all the capital T's on one side, I'm simply going to divide by this T minus 70 thing here. So if I do that, uh, my left side should look like this, and my right side will simply be negative K D little t. So there we go. Uh, at this point, there's really nothing more that I need to do. Um, except go ahead and integrate both sides. I'm at that stage now. And if I do that, uh, what am I going to get for my integral here on the left? Well, notice that the top is a derivative of the bottom. And so that means I'm going to have the natural log of quantity, or absolute value rather, uh, capital T minus 70. Uh, on the right side, I'll have negative K little t, and I better include my constant of integration somewhere. I'll just keep it over here on the right uh, without loss of generality. So at this point, uh, if I do want to solve for capital T, of course I'm going to have to exponentiate both sides of this equation. And having done that, uh, what I'm going to get here is capital T minus 70. And over on the right side, well, of course, the C can come down and turn into some constant or another. Um, I'll call it capital C. Why not? 
uh, e to the negative kt. Now remember that this c, the constant of integration, and this c are not necessarily the same. So keep that in mind. These are not the same constants. Um, but at this stage, I'm almost at my general solution. Uh, if I just add 70 to both sides, what I'll get is that capital T equals capital C e to the uh, C e to the negative k t, and then plus 70, of course. So there is my general solution. To find my particular solution, uh, pay attention again to the initial condition that I have going on here. Uh, obviously, capital T is going to equal 140, while little t is going to equal 0. So let's see how this is going to look. Uh, I'll have capital C e to the negative k times 0 plus 70. And uh, a little bit of math here. Well, let's see, e to the 0 is 1. So it looks like what I'm actually going to have is 140 equals capital C plus 70. And therefore, capital C must, of course, equal 70. And so my particular solution here in example B is actually going to say capital T equals 70 e to the negative kt plus 70. Or if you want, we can go ahead and uh, factor a 70 out of here, if that would make you feel better about it. Uh, and we're left with, of course, e to the negative kt plus 1. So there is our particular solution to this differential equation. Uh, again, as with the last example, I certainly encourage you to go ahead uh, differentiate this so you can find out what dt uh, over dt is. And then once you find that, go ahead and plug that back into the differential equation. Do a little bit of math and magic and uh, see that this uh, particular solution is in fact correct. All right, so there is our second of three examples. Uh, that's going to move us into our third and final example, example C, um, where one strange little thing is going to happen. It's an easy looking problem. And quite honestly, it's not difficult to do. Uh, but there is one little trick involved. Of course, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video here. Try example C on your own. And I will join you at example C. So up to this point, almost every differential equation that we dealt with has had a solution that involves either E or the natural logarithm or something along those lines. Uh, example C here is going to be a contradiction uh, to the rule that differential equation solutions always have E in them. Um, you'll see that this one, in fact, does not. However, uh, the natural log is involved in the process of getting to the solution. And rather than talking more about it, why don't we just go ahead and take a look at it here. Uh, what we're going to do is try to find the equation of a graph that has this given derivative, 2y over 3x, and passes through the point 8, comma 2. So just like we've been doing, uh, we need to start by separating these variables. So uh, let's see here. If I have y prime equals 2y over 3x, what can I do to separate the variables to get all the y, y primes, and all that on one side? Um, well, actually, what I'm going to do first is turn my y prime into a dy dx. And so what I'm going to do here is divide by this y and multiply by this dx. Watch what this is going to result in. I'll have dy over y. And over on the right side of the equation, uh, what I'll have is, well, 1 third dx over x. And I'm missing a 2, so I will include my 2 in there. And then it all works out fine. Anyway, at this stage, I can go ahead and integrate both sides of this. And what that integral will result in is the natural log of the absolute value of y on the left and 2 thirds times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c on the right. And it looks like we're almost there. Um, we do have that natural log that we're used to finding here. So let's just go ahead and exponentiate both sides. And well, this is going to be interesting here on the right. But certainly here on the left, this will just give me y. So that's OK. Uh, over here on the right, um, 
I'm going to keep my e, but this two thirds that's a coefficient to the natural log. Uh, perhaps what I can do is move that so that it is an exponent of the x, and so I'll have something like that. Now, of course, just like in example b, I'm going to take the c and move it on down, and so what I'm going to end up with here is y equals uh, capital C, which is different than the C I had before, uh, times e to the natural log of x to the 2 thirds. Now, this is quite interesting, and you might notice that there is some simplification I can do here. Uh, in fact, uh, e and the natural log are going to cancel each other out, and the argument of the natural log is actually going to come down. And so my general solution to this is actually going to be y equals this capital C. Of course, the e is gone, the natural log is gone, and what I have is x to the 2 thirds. Interesting general solution. There's no e, there's no natural log. Hey, it is what it is. But what I do need to do now is use this point to try to find what c is. So it tells me that y is 2, and it tells me that x is going to be 8. So uh, if this is going to be 8 to the 2 thirds power, of course I can simplify that a little bit. 8 to the 2 thirds power is simply 4. And what I'm going to get then is that my capital C must, of course, be 1 half. And what does this mean? Well, my particular solution to this is actually going to be y equals 1 half x to the 2 thirds power. And there we go. Now, can this really be that easy? I go ahead and challenge you, just like in the last two examples. Find the derivative of y and stick it in here, the left side of the derivative equation. Over here on the right side, simply go 2 multiplied by y, which will be easy enough. That 2 will just cancel out the 1 half. And then divide that by 3x. See if the two sides of the derivative equation don't match each other. I bet they will. I've done it myself. Give it a shot. See what happens. All right. So here in lesson 5.7, we honestly did not do a whole lot. Um, we looked at differential equations, which, to be truthful, we've looked at before. Uh, we did them by separating variables, which, in truth, we've done that before as well. Uh, the only difference here is that we didn't really provide any context to it. In 5.6, we looked at growth and decay, things like that. Here in Lesson 5.7, we just did problems. Pure math. You gotta love that. Um, but even though this was pure math, please do be aware that these differential equations are very, very, very useful mathematical constructs. In fact, any time that a quantity depends on its own rate of change, we're talking about a differential equation. Think about, for example, Newton's law of cooling. If you don't know about Newton's law of cooling, certainly ask your physics teacher or look it up yourself. Um, a, uh, a particle that is falling, of course, is uh, going to have gravity as its acceleration, but air resistance will be pushing back up on it. So the velocity with which it falls will be related uh, to its acceleration. And you can see there we have a quantity and its derivative, both in the same uh, equation. So these differential equations are extremely useful. Um, in fact, there is an entire course in college that will be devoted towards differential equations. Uh, most of you will take that course after Calculus 3, if you're lucky enough. Um, at some colleges, that course is referred to as Calculus 4. In other colleges, and most colleges probably, it's actually referred to as Diff EQ, differential equations. And so, uh, it is a very important topic of study. It is a very broad and very deep topic of study. Um, because this video was so short, I'm giving you time to now jump on the internet, uh, go to Wikipedia or whatever resource you like, look up differential equations, and learn yourself something. And when you're finished with that, go ahead and begin on your assignment, and as always, good luck.